So today I'm going to be showing you the performance of the S23 Ultra and how it does with emulating Switch games. I'll be taking you through what emulation options you have, how they perform in terms of benchmark and if it's generally worthwhile emulating Switch games on your phone. This video can also apply to any um, phone that is running the latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor. In this instance I decided to use my caddy that I made and if you want to see the video of me making that I'll leave a link in the comment description below. Now without wasting any more of your time let's have a look at some of the emulation option. The first one I wanted to have a look at is Egg NS, and you can easily download that file from the Google Play Store. I already have it installed here and once you get it downloaded the application is a little bit iffy, it asks to access a lot of your information on your phone, giving you access to your location and then also then when you click on some of the tabs it will then ask you to then go into Google Drive locations to then download the ROMs and also the production keys that you need to play the games. Now while I was downloading this I just felt very uncomfortable with downloading stuff directly from the application site and you don't really know where all this stuff is coming from so yeah I would not recommend Egg NS. I've seen some comments online where people have said that it works I don't know if those comments are genuine or not so it's a little bit dubious that I would really want to be using this on my phone the other thing that I thought was quite hilarious was if you click on that little egghead on the right there he just says what's the problem the emulator I do recommend using is Skyline emulator, not that Skyline, this Skyline. That emulator works really well with Android phones. They don't have anything on the Play Store at the moment. You have to navigate to the website. You then have to navigate to the download button and click download. You then get a download prompt which says this file might be harmful. Just click download anyway and then you may need to release some of the permissions to allow it to be installed. Once installed, you'll get onto the home screen and from here you can then import your ROM files wherever you've saved them and downloaded them from. Unfortunately, I can't tell you where I got mine from because that might put me at risk of being demonetized. And then the next thing you need to do is your production keys and also your title keys. Both the keys can be easily downloaded together off a website again I can't tell you where you can get those from but once you've loaded those two in that's pretty much it your games will then appear on the home screen and you can use the on-screen controller which is fairly handy or you can map a Bluetooth controller in this case I used a DS controller and that seemed to work really well and it was really easy to map uh, talking about the controller mapping, it does kind of catch you out a little bit for some of the buttons you have to hold down, for some of the other configurations you just have to click it once and there you are done. But overall it's pretty painless and it's very easy to do. You can also map more than just one controller so if you wanted to have four player Smash Brothers go ahead and you can do that on your phone. Now the first game up for emulation is Bayonetta 2 and this was quite a fast paced game, really good graphics. Unfortunately you can't change the resolution so I have no idea if I was running this at 1080p or 4k. I had a look at the settings, I couldn't really see anything in there that told me what it was or what I could change it to. But I'm assuming this is 1080p and it is running flawlessly at 60fps. It has no problems at all running this game. so. Overall, I was very impressed with it running Bayonetta 2, and it ran it very well. Next up, I tried Hyrule Warriors, and yes, the game booted up. There was no problems at all. I could get past the menu, and then I managed to, you know, select my game mode. It went to then a blank screen, which was a bit strange and then I could hear some dialogue going on in the background but I couldn't see anything and then after that it would then go to a loading screen and then it would then go again go back to a blank screen so I have to count this game as being incompatible I don't think it's got anything to do with the phone but rather the fact that the emulator wasn't compatible with running this game now running Luigi Mansion 3 again I tested this game and I changed the settings in the background turn loads of things on and off 
and it didn't seem to make a difference with Luigi Mansion 3. I had the black background, some of the text was missing, and it was just buggy as anything. So, unfortunately, Luigi Mansion 3 is not compatible with this emulation. So the next ga game I tried was Link's Awakening, and this game actually ran. Managed to get it to load. It did go through a couple of blank screens or black screens, um, but once I managed to get past those screens, I managed to load the game up, and it's running the game it's not running it very well and it was running it quite slowly also my fps counter in the corner had disappeared so that was a bit strange even though i had the option still turned on and then when i went back into the menu there was an option to improve the performance of the game so i turned that on and it's probably a bit subjective because I have no idea what the performance is before and after without the FPS counter. But it looked a little bit smoother than what it was like before. But again, it's possibly subjective and I couldn't put any science behind that. Overall, it ran the game okay, I guess. And um, yeah, it worked. So let's have a look at the next game. So next up is Sonic Mania and this game ran flawlessly. There was absolutely no issues running this game. Ran super fast, managed to get in and out of menus really quickly. I played a couple of levels and different game modes just to see if there was anything that could break the game in the background and Sonic ran really well. But being honest, it's not really saying much when you can actually just emulate Sonic games from the Mega Drive emulator. So I suppose there probably are additional features in this game that you won't get in the original copies of Sonic. But even so, you know, it's not groundbreaking. But either way, this game ran really well and no issues with emulation here. Now, after doing a bit of research, I found a list of games that are compatible and there's not a huge amount on there. So that explains why some games work really well and some didn't. So not great experience with Skyline emulator. It does emulate it very well and it has nothing to do with the phone's performance. So yeah, maybe in a couple of years we might be there. So on that bombshell, I suppose, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.